Tonight, government lifts pre-departure testing requirements to Niue. La Kappa welcomes new Ecclesia pastor. Good evening, I'm Soraya Mangawa and this is your BCN News. Leading our news tonight, after a period of having zero active cases of COVID-19, Niue was able to record one new case of COVID-19, according to yesterday's latest update on the Niue COVID website. Meanwhile, the government has announced earlier this week that it will be lifting its requirements for all travellers to Niue to complete a pre-departure test starting tomorrow. Here's more on this story. The island has recorded a total of 748 cases of COVID-19 since March 2022 last year. All cases have been considered recovered. According to a government press release issued on Tuesday this week, all travellers to Niue are no longer required to carry out a COVID-19 pre-departure test, starting with the flight arriving tomorrow, the 10th of February. In the press statement, all travellers are still required to complete a self-rapid antigen test on day one and on day three to complete a PCR test at the Niue 4 hospital drive through If the results of either test is positive, travellers must isolate immediately. All other border entry requirements such as a vaccine pass and travel insurance for non-residents remain in place. All travellers are still required to submit their traveller declaration form and present a travel pass to enter Niue. This form can be found on the Niue COVID-19 website at www.covid19.gov.nu. The Fonoi Kipule, which was meant to take place last Wednesday, has been postponed to Wednesday next week, the 15th of February. BCN News understands that some members of the Fonoi Kipule are waiting for the Premier to announce or make a decision on the date of the next general elections. Esther Pavihi reports. Premier Dalton Tangilangi had indicated to BCN News last year that he intends on calling the general elections for the first quarter of this year, but he has yet to inform the Fonoi Kipule of that decision. The last general elections was held on the 30th of May 2020. Once the Premier has chosen the date of the general elections, the process will begin between the Speaker of the Fonoi Hima Douglas, and the Chief Electoral Officer, Darren Tohovaka. The Speaker will inform the Chief Electoral Officer, who will then confirm and announce the official date of the general elections. The 17th New Legislative Assembly will then be dissolved, and the Cabinet will go into caretaker mode until after the general election and the new government is formed. The meeting of the Fonagipule next week will discuss the government's performance report 2020-2023. After a long time without a pastor for the village, La Kepa was finally able to welcome their new Ecclesia pastor, Reverend Thomas Alva Pineki Kawie, for his induction, which took place yesterday morning. A beautiful day and program for the village church congregation to welcome a new addition to the village. The program began at 10 a.m. at the La Kepa Ecclesia Church, where he was ordained by Niue Ecclesia Kirisiano President Reverend Navy Salitielu as the new pastor for the La Kepa Ecclesia congregation. Following after the service was the welcome and reception at 12 p.m. situated outside of the pastor's new home in La Kepa. BCN News was able to speak with Reverend Kawie yesterday afternoon, who shared how delighted he was to finally make it home for his new calling in the village of La Kepa. I am so happy that um, it happened finally because we have been trying uh, for me and my family and the group of Wakepa Male Loa uh, to be here for uh, this uh, event and finally it happened. Praise be to God. For making it happen. The new pastor for La Kepa was meant to arrive on the island two weeks ago, but due to the weather conditions, the flights were cancelled three times. Despite the grim outlook caused by the flight disruptions, Reverend Kawie remained optimistic about the long journey to Niue. It was an amazing journey that we tried uh, two, twice to get here to Niue, and they said third time lucky. So thank you so much for uh, those people that travel with me, that have faith in God. What we have seen today, um, it creates history, uh, especially for me as an old um, minister in New Zealand that um, have to come here 
in people's house. And a New Zealand Lakepa Ecclesia Niue group also arrived with Reverend Kawie on the Tuesday flight this week. Although it was anticipated that more than 40 group members were meant to arrive on Tuesday, only half could make it. It was a beautiful day with a wide range of traditional umu food, good vibes and performances. Niue is currently in its wet and tropical cyclone season, also classified as the La Nina period, and it's for this reason that the flights last weekend were disrupted. BCN News was able to speak with the director of the Niue Meteorological Services, Mrs. Rosie Misi Epo, on Tuesday this week, where she explained the island's current weather situation and to expect above average rainfall in the next few months. BCN News was also able to speak with some of the outgoing passengers earlier this week who shared their experiences of the flight disruptions which prolonged their stay on the island. Niue's wet and tropical cyclone season began in November 2022 last year and will conclude in April of 2023 this year. Since three years ago, in 2020, the month of February has recorded the highest annual rainfall of more than 200 millimetres, with the record set in February 2020 with 594.7 millimetres. Rosie told BCN News that the rest of the week and month is expected to experience above average rainfall for the island. The end of December of last year, it was okay, everything was calm, nice and sunny. But only this year, beginning of the year, the rain has um, started to kick in uh, so much more um, in end of January of this year and now into February. So it's from end of January to February currently, that's the period when we um, saw that a lot of the troughs or low pressure systems have occurred and a series of troughs have gone past um, through New Way. Uh, between the last uh, few weeks. So um, in saying that, we have to be mindful that we are also in the um, La Nina situation, uh, which means that Niue's uh, rainfall uh, is above normal. Uh, normally, it's like around 2,000 millimeters a year. It could be a little bit more than that uh, within the year or within a, each a given month. And for us also to... Uh, be mindful that we have a um, that there there is the uh, South Pacific convergence zone, and this is where most of the convection or the activity of the cloud, like the uh, more of the weather, unstable weather is in the uh, South Pacific. So uh, normally it's uh, above Niue, uh, but now it's gone a little bit to the south uh, or over Niue. And these are the, the systems that's been coming up below us. So we're getting all these um, tail end of the deep low pressure system far south of Niwe. And they're coming in parts, like a little cloud will come across us, bring us the rain, the lightning, the thunder, mm -hmm. and then it moves across. And then after that, it's a calm period, and then another one comes along. So to us, it's uh, for us to be mindful of the weather situation and to understand the changes that we are going through uh, right now and to appreciate, uh, to learn, appreciate the learning of uh, our own climate system and our own weather patterns here in Niue. Something she urges the public to be mindful of and to always stay prepared. The unusually above normal rainfall caused major disruptions to the travel plans of hundreds of passengers last weekend. For the passengers on the island, it did not pose much of a concern, as much as the passengers who were on the flight who had to experience more than 10 hours in flight, which diverted to Samoa and back to Auckland last weekend, two consecutive days in a row. However, it was fortunate that the third attempt of the flight was finally able to land safely on Tuesday this week. BCN News was able to speak to some of the outgoing passengers on Tuesday this week who were awaiting to board their flight. One of the passengers included Hio Cafe owner and local businesswoman Victoria Posimani, who shared some of her insights on the flight disruptions last week. Yeah, it's an inconvenience, but it's, um, it's a safety eh, for all of us, and I'm just pretty proud of Met. Uh, and their team advising in New Zealand in New Zealand making sure that um, it's safe to travel. The inconveniences is the food that we take down and um, those that need to get back to their home country to, to work, tourists, there's inconvenience in that which is 
a really cool thing that um, we need to take insurance out hey, for these like this. We are in hurricane season. Um, these things happen, climate change. It's just, you know, you've, we're seeing fluctuations in our weather. And so I'm just pretty proud of Air New Zealand at the standard. Um, but yeah, there's some hiccups along the way, but those things are minute in comparison to safety. Um, there are passengers that have been to Samoa twice, so I, I think about them and, and, and the problems there. But um, we hear they're all safe in that. So third time lucky today and we pray God, you know, we have a safe trip down and they have a safe trip up. Victoria also told BCN News the reactions when they had found out that the flight had diverted to Samoa and got cancelled while she was awaiting in the departure lounge last week. I was in the departure lounge, this is uh, twice over and there was a lot of booing. Um, but, but it was a booing because some people feel that we should have been notified a little bit earlier. Um, but th these decisions are left to, again to the weather people and um, in New Zealand. BCN News was also able to speak to a New Zealand couple who were also preparing to fly out last weekend. Well, we sat at the airport for two days in a row um, only to find that our flight had been cancelled again. Um, which was very disappointing, but yeah, we've just had an extended holiday. We came for a week and we're probably almost Wait. at three. <laughs> Diane told BCN News that it was out of their control for what happened last week. We've got to still get a, another flight from Auckland to get home, which has made it more difficult because we've had to reschedule that one you know, more than a few times as well. But, um, yeah, Lise is retired, so, you know, he can go with the flow. I'm a little bit concerned about my work, but, you know, there's not a lot you can do about it. BCN News reached out to Air New Zealand for comment earlier this week. In response, Air New Zealand representatives said that the passengers who opted not to travel were offered a travel credit to use within the next 12 months. Where flights are disrupted by weather, Air New Zealand reaccommodates affected customers on the next available flights or provides alternative transport options. Also last weekend, the island experienced a nationwide power outage on Friday morning. Although there was a brief outage for the southern side, the power continued to shut down for most of the north and eastern villages. Director of Utilities Clinton Chapman provided an update to all the village councils about the power situation last week. Last Sunday evening, the director of the Department of Utilities, Clinton Chapman, updated village councils saying that it appears we have ongoing low voltage issues from Mutalo to Liku. There is still power insufficient for appliances of high rating. He asked that people limit the use of large appliances as it may continue with the interruptions to power from Mutalo to Liku. The Ministry of Infrastructure continued to work on restoring power and water to the villages on the eastern side of the island earlier this week. The message uh, for the villages of Liku and Lakapa is to conserve the use of water. Earlier this week, Clinton Chapman posted also on the Village Council uh, Messenger Group saying that as well as La Capa, a portable generator is being used to power the water bore pump at Liku due to a damaged power supply cable as well. They continued to ask people to not waste water and to report any water leak leaks in their villages. As the public service continues to evolve with the changes to the organizational structure of the departments and the establishment of new ministries, BCA News is aware that the new Ministry of Finance, Economic and Planning is also undergoing some staff changes. The long-serving Head of Statistics and Immigration, Kim Ray Vaha, has taken the one-year incentive package offered to public servants as an early retirement and transition to the private sector. According to the Public Service Commission, the vacancy left by Mr. Kim Ray Vaha has opened up two positions that will be filled by new heads of departments. Although the two new heads of departments have not officially been notified of their appointments, however, it's understood through correspondence by the Public Service Commission that Margaret Tsiosikefu will be the new head of Immigration Department and Numa Sioniholo will head the Statistics Department as part of the new Ministry of Finance, Economic and Planning. BCN News is also aware that the Public Service Commission has extended the contract for one year of the Director of Education, Bufa Tongahai.
Schools are currently in their second week of term one and earlier this week, the usual New Year High School newsletter was issued to the public informing of several new teachers for the start of the school year, two chosen principal nominees and also the New Year High School prefix for 2023. Here's more on this story. The school announced that the role of principal's nominee responsible for the management and coordination of NCEA will now be carried by two senior teachers, Mrs. Joyce Labatad Nevalangi and Mrs. Nainasa Faleovalu. The intermediate department is now being led by new head of department, Alison Mokoye, with her new team of four teachers, two from Tonga, one from Fiji and one from the Philippines. There are three new teachers in health, horticulture and one for technology, all from Fiji. Georgia George Valiana is a full-time teacher aide for the subject of social science and history. The school also has a new team of student leaders. The head boy for New High School is Frank George Valiana and the head girl is Annalise Bavihisioniholo. And that concludes our news bulletin for tonight. Do join us again next week, Tuesday and Thursday, for more of our local news. I'm Soraya Mangawa, signing off. Good night.